Historic main schooner from 1900 to be sold for pennies due to high operating costs. And none of us have a master's license with a sailing endorsement to take delivery of the thing. Weigh the anchor, stay the mainsails, hoist the jib, Mr. Zerg face, strike the jaunty shanty as we make ways. Wow, so hard. I've read all the Aubrey Maturin books multiple times. Does that count? And none of us have a master's license with a sailing endorsement to take delivery of the thing? I guess tugboats aren't a thing anymore. Well shucks partner, you got a license for them there piece of tarp? $650,000. Pennies. Damn, over half a million is pennies now. Inflation must be hitting real hard. Ahoy mates! Every one put in whatever is in your pockets, are We be buying a ship. Lurkers and new fags. Ask mommy for your allowance early. All hands on deck, K is buying a boat, Arr. I know boats are just expensive money pits boomers burn away to LARP in, but what in the fuck about the thing could possibly cost so much a year? Is this counting port fees? Why would I want to be on a boat with any of you faggots? Oh, the year was 2022, and the men of K made a mighty crew. It's a damn tough life full of toil and strife we can undergo and we don't give a damn when the day is done how bright the glow is glowed for we're homeward bound the normie grounds with a good ship taut and free and we don't give a damn when we clean our guns with the traps of old maui your whole filleted team it's all right you'll see do what you want cause the feds aren't at sea you're a commando there once was a ship that was put to sea it was filled with spurgs and the smell of pee soon may be the base boys come to bring us tinnies and titties and rum one day when our tonguing anus is done we'll gtf food all dead seagull storage win come on men we've got to recover that tim rat those Vatnik will be done for when they fall into our trap. We're a club of tuneful anons. We can sing in every clef. We can even hit the high notes. It's just too bad we're tone deaf. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. It's the happening. We need to grab SKS and go in the woods. If any of us had guns, we could. We make green text about having sex with deer. When commandos find no red, we call him a queer. Post guns if you want to post here. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. The 220 year old schoomer. Ah, I'm schooning. James, I don't know what led you to post that article about the victory chimes, but I used to work on that schooner before the current owner bought it. Surprised the hell out of me to see that in here. No oh, way, that's awesome. Gabe was talking about it. Yeah, spent many months refitting and rigging it for the 2017 sailing season. Here's the link. Ha, <laughs> I like the one guy asking how could it possibly cost that much beside port fees. Clearly doesn't know how much it costs to maintain a wooden sailing ship that age. Every year you're cutting out and replacing more soft and spongy wood. Also, redoing all the bright work with va fresh varnish. And the paint? Dear God, the paint. Never mind desealing and sealing your water tanks. And paying all us crew to make that happen. And dockyard fees for stepping and pulling the mast to have them repaired. We've pulled and stepped the foremast and amidships mast when I was on board. Also tarring all the rigging. That's a week of sitting in the chair getting hoisted up and down the mass. Anyhow, just had to share. What's the coolest thing about working on that ship? As far as crewing it and sailing, I'd have to say the creaking and groaning as the ship talks while under sail. For working on it and maintaining it, I'd have to say my favorite was the final product when doing the bright work. Also, what was your worst and best experience while on that ship? Stepping back and seeing everything shine and the varnish lay down smooth. Best? 
Being aloft on nice days and working on the rigging. Very peaceful slash simple work and great views. It's just really nice hanging from a rope and looking out over the bay. Worst, sanding slash painting interior cabins with just a drop of light for visibility. There's many, many layers of paint over the years and anywhere it's flaking slash bubbling off the wood, you have to scrape the loose paint back until it's adhered to the wood. Then sand and feather the edges for the old paint into a smooth transition. Then roll and tip the new paint on to make it look like it's all one coat and never got touched up. And there's a lot of interior cabins. Fun fact, that ship can never sail outside of coastal waters because it has no bulkheads. You can go virtually stem to stern without going above deck. What is the biggest misunderstanding people have in regards to these old wooden ships or that might be overlooked in these Hollywood movies? That they're slow as fuck. Like in all the movies you see, these ships throwing a huge bow wave and blasting through waves. But this size schooner, it just doesn't do that. And yeah, in high winds and heavier seas, you'll get rolling and moving, but it's a lumbering big ship. When the passengers first get on, if the weather is fair, they kind of walk around and going, is this as fast as we go? But the more typical crowd that goes on the trips are what we call the gray hair crowd. Mostly people in their 50s or later who had the free time and money to do something extravagant like this. Also the bathroom situation. You're getting on a schooner with 25 other people. There's three bathrooms, one of which belongs to the captain alone. This actually opens up a new line of questions. What was your favorite type of passenger and which type of passenger did you hate the most? The year I crewed the ship, we only had older crowds. I got told of younger passengers and how they were, but the year I did it, we didn't really get any. I distinctly remember one young kid, 8 or 9 years old, that we were constantly having to remind to not try to get up on the railing or not swing off the banisters. Typical kid stuff that the parents just didn't care. When doing night watch, we would walk the passageway the length of the ship between the cabins and you swore you heard people on the verge of death sometimes. Either the sound they made snoring or the gasping slash wheezing for air that just made you shudder. I like 95% of our customers. They were generally very polite, tipped okay, and just wanted to know the history of the ship slash when mills were. The other 5% were grumpy old farts who didn't want to be there, but their partner said they were going to go. Mind if I add this to the green text video? I'll omit your name and PFP if you want as well. I don't mind at all. I doubt anybody I crewed with slash knew from back then would ever connect me to this anyways. We had seven crew to run the ship, and a couple of those people got replaced through the year. I moved on from working on tall ships because the pay isn't great, and I wanted to go back to school. Is there anything you would like everyone to know who is watching this? If you're ever on a cruise slash charter ship, you'll likely never know something is going wrong or went wrong. The only clue you'll have is if the trash pump suddenly starts and we do a fire drill, or if shit hits the fan and we break out the life jacket slash rafts. Besides that extreme circumstance, the crew will do its best to make you think nothing is wrong and keep you having a good time. Yep, that seems like good info to have. I appreciate you answering all my questions. No problem. If you think of any more, or want to know more about the cost slash maintenance of running a ship like that, feel free to ask.